This is the first time I've ever done like a mukbang kind of thing. Okay, it's not really mukbang because I, I, I'm supposed to ask you questions. Okay, I'll ask you. I keep getting distracted by the deliciousness of this. Hello everyone, I'm Kayan from OGS. So as you guys can see from all your social medias, everyone is now a chef, uh, a CV chef. I personally love to cook. I wanted to use this time to explore local and regional cuisine. In my own words, being a grandma, because quite a lot of recipes require a lot of prep work. Like for example, making spice pastes, you have to chop and all that. Anyway, I've decided to use this golden opportunity to speak with someone that I really admire. Her name is Camellia Chia. If you haven't heard this name, you, you just Google lah. There's a lot of articles about her. She's a Singaporean chef and author of this cookbook called Wet Market to Table. Which yes, I have a copy and I, I want to take the time to flex it. My copy is signed, okay? Signed, okay? And she recently started a project to showcase the diversity of Singaporean cuisine and lesser known local recipes. Hello, hi Pam. Hey Kayan, nice to meet you. So what we're gonna make is kacang pu and it's actually a, a dish that I first tasted when I was working in Kendona as a cook. You know, I was quite shocked at how simple it was to prepare and how simple the ingredients were, which was why I felt that it was very relevant in this time. Okay, let's get started. Do you know more about the origins of the dish? So I actually ate this dish called Fu Madames, which is a Middle Eastern kind of bean stew. And apparently that is where kacang pu came from. A lot of people from Singapore, like Malaysia, would go to Middle East for their pilgrimage. And I think they kind of brought it back and put their own local spin on it. What have you been like up to lately? So currently I'm based in Melbourne. I've been working as a chef. Now that COVID has happened, most of the eateries and restaurants are pretty much closed. What actually inspired you to start Singapore noodles? So Singapore noodles is actually a dish that we've come across a lot. When I first saw them on the menu, I felt very amused. Um, but after a while, I started getting a bit offended. So I think I really started this to share about real Singaporean food, like what people really eat in Singapore. So there are tons of like Singaporean YouTube food channels where you would see all the dishes being Chinese and yet it's labelled as a Singaporean food blog. I feel that that is a huge injustice to our food because it's so diverse and so broad. And I just felt that if I wasn't going to do something about it, it would be lost, you know, forever because no one else is interested in this cuisine. Okay, so my paste has started to ooze oil and I'm gonna add the beans in now. I think it's called like pichak minyak, is it? Yes, yes. Oh my uh, god, I'm impressed. <laughs> of course. Huh? When you step into Singapore, Malaysia or even Indonesia, when you take a look at the curries, there's always like a thick layer of oil floating on top. Yeah, that's because you actually the mixture where the oil begins to surface and the oil basically fries the whole mixture. Can I, can I see your screen? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I think yours looks like mine. It, is it? it? The it is mine like really watery. Look at that. Okay, yours is watery too. Okay, that's great. Uh, do you have a baguette? Yeah, yeah, I, I bought an apple right? I went to buy the old school kind. Oh my oh. god! This one, right? Oh. The Noah Noah one. Uh, you know? Noah is like, uh, only two. like being too classy. How do you top it? Like, so do you put the egg. egg on top? Yeah. Okay. Just as much as you want. And the green chili. This is mine. And then put your bread in. Okay, I'll put it in later. Okay, okay let's take a photo. Okay. Yeah, and like from my frame, I can see all my laundry at the back. <laughs> oh, it's damn nice there. Eh. Let's say I, I were to do a poll on Instagram, like on OGS, right? Like, how many people do you think 
would know what kacang pool is. Too often? Okay, we'll try it. Yeah, I was actually quite interested like for Singapore noodles, how do you choose what type of like recipes or what dishes you want to feature? Uh, one of the videos that I'm working on is a fishball one. Um, fishball? Fishball is like so commonplace, but I went online, I saw versions of that, but none of them from like a Singaporean context or a Singaporean taste that had like all the tricks, you know, like how they do that with their hands. And so, those are the kind of things that I really want to do. What sparked your interest in food? Mm. Like your personal food journey? When I was growing up, everyone, like my piano teacher, my family members, they all called me Tam Tia. And they were like, you know, I would just use all my fingers and eat. I wouldn't care about how I looked like to anyone. But I think a big part of what made me the foodie that I am today was the fact that my maternal and paternal side were very, very different. I would go to my grandmother's place every week. You know, I was brought up with the understanding that even cheap food can be so delicious. And then my dad's side was like more like um, the taste were oh, a bit, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A bit more sophisticated and I think the understanding of both worlds when it comes to food really cemented who I am as a foodie and as a chef. Oh, your, your switch to like Southeast Asian cooking. So when I first started cooking as a professional chef, the idea was always to use like the best ingredient and cook it very simply. And I just felt in my heart that that wasn't true to who I was as a cook because the basis of Singaporean cooking or like home cooking is always about taking what is very humble and very basic and transforming it through your own craft, your own skill. And so that's when I really started thinking about like looking into Asian food. I think another thing that uh, strikes me about you is that you are really passionate about preserving like lesser known Singaporean food. Because even a simple dish like the kacang food that we made, I will never think of cooking it but now that I made it like I kind of feel like I understand a little bit more about like the dish. It's like actually a really nice way to tell stories through food. Thanks so much Pam for having me. Bye! Bye! Yeah, to be honest, I want to do like a cooking series with aunties and uncles. We collaborate, we collaborate, we collaborate. Okay. <laughs> if you want to watch us cooking with aunties and uncles, then yeah. like, then tell us in the comments below. Yeah, you'll probably see us get scolded by aunties. Because <laughs> you know, aunties always think that their cooking is right, right? But at least they won't be standing beside you and breathing down your neck. They'll just be like, scolding you through the screen. Oh my god. Can relate. <laughs>